Hello happy stampers! Today is my day for casing the catalog and this is Kate with Kate's Paper Creations. So um, you can see the project we're going to be making today. It is found on page 28 of the annual catalog and it's this right here and it utilizes the ombre gift bags which is kind of fun and um, so let's get started. It also uses, let's bring in what it's going to, what I'm going to be using, the Pansy Patch Bundle, because you'll need both, I don't think you need the stamps, just the dies, which are called Pansy dies. I'm going to be using basic borders, and I'm using this border right here. Checks and Dots, the new mini stamp and cut emboss folders, and I'm going to be using the checks one. And then, of course, the ombre gift bags, which are in the new in colors. And you get quite a few of them, and it's they're really lovely. So that's what those are. I'm sure there's lots of different ways those can be used. Um, sometimes it's just kind of fun to have a nice little bag to put something in as a gift. You could put some um, cards that you've made in one or whatever. So this is, again, this is what I'm going to be making. I'm using this gift bag and let me show you how I guess I'll need this let's get some more light here just to make sure that things show up good so this is the checks from the checks and dots folders and to get this look on your bag all you have to do is slide this inside no I did that wrong <laughs> come up from the bottom <laughs> Uh, it took me a second to figure it out the first time, and you'd think I'd remember, but anyway. We're going to line it up so that it's even on the edge, and we're going to put it in there just like that. And then the sandwich for this particular die is, you take that plate, this plate out, number two, and you just have your base plate, number one, a cutting mat, the piece you're going to emboss, and a second cutting mat. And that will get that. So let's run that through. And then to finish getting the rest of it, all you have to do is line up the squares. And um, what I did is I looked for, there we go. You can see them when you do it. And um, and you just want to make sure you get out to the edge. And the ones you overlap, it's not going to hurt anything. So then you just run it through a second time. And that will get the whole piece embossed. And then let me show you the back side once I get it run through here. I'll put my mats back, my plates back in. Okay, and there it is. And the front and the back both look perfect. So that was an excellent, excellent plan to do it that way. So there is the basic bag. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, then I used this ribbon that's in the new mini catalog that's coming out August 3rd it goes live and it is called glittered organdy ribbon the one in the catalog used the quarter inch gingham bumblebee gingham gingham excuse me I don't have that um, particular ribbon so I decided that this looked really lovely with this particular um, design so that's what I'm going to do that's my long piece to make the bow here's my short piece that I'm going to put on the bag I did not wrap it around the bag because I was concerned that that would then limit what I could put in. I was afraid it might not open up as well. So I just put one piece across what would be the front. You could do another one on the back. Um, that would be up to you. I am going to use my stamp and seal and I am going to just follow one row of the I'm going to make sure I have it clear to the edge and then I'm going to stick my ribbon to it 
and I cut it just slightly longer than I needed and I will trim off the ends. And that's how I did the ribbon for sticking on the front of the on the front of the bag. Um, sometimes I will take the tape and run it on the ribbon itself, but this didn't want to. It didn't want to come out. It didn't want to work. So I figured this would be the better way. And I did do it, and it, it's it's holding very nicely. So so that's good. And then I made a 10 inch piece, and I used it to make my bow. And as you know, I just make my bows like this: loop, loop, over and under and then pull them and adjust. So that's how I make my bows. Works pretty good for me. I'll straighten that a little bit. There we go. And I like that bow. And I think I like it just like that. I'm gonna make the ends, oopsie, there we go. Just something about that needing to be like that. Okay, we'll save the bow for later. The next piece is from the um, Pansy Petals Designer Series papers. And I'm using the same one that they used in their sample. And this piece is cut five by three and a half. So five long, three and a half wide. And it's going to go on the front here like, about like so. And the way I did this is I just put one row of adhesive right across the top, like this, and then attached it and let it hang free, just like that. Then the next piece is um, Whisper White, and I, or Whisper White, I do that every time, Basic White, and I used Thick for this because it's, I just felt like it needed it and um, it is three by four and a half. And this one I put a little bit more adhesive on. Um, this bag I did not put a sentiment on, but there's room for it if you want to. Um, that's up to you. I'm, I'm gonna leave this one blank as well. And I attached this with stamp and seal as well. And I did put a little bit more on this one so that it would stick well. And I'm not worried about getting clear to the edges. I just want to make sure it stays on so it doesn't need anything super fancy. And then I'm going to do it like this. And then we can attach the bow with a glue dot. Get a glue dot here. Where'd it go? Sometimes those little guys disappear on you, you know? And we'll attach the bow up there like that. Okay, so there's that part of the card, super simple. And then all we have to do is to build our pansy and leaves that we're gonna attach. And so let me get those pieces over here. So here are all the pieces. I decided to make my pansy with whisper, uh, basic white, fresh freesia, and highland heather. And the leaves are soft, succulent, and evening evergreen. And um, all of the dies for these are in your stamp set, or in your die set, I should say. And I'm just cleaning out the little chads out of the detailed part of the leaves. Get those cleaned up, get that out of the way. And we'll start with the leaves. They're the easy ones, very easy ones. I'm going to turn over the pieces, the detail pieces, and I'm going to my favorite two-way glue pen and get it to start coming out. There we go. And clean that up. Two different sizes of leaves. There's that one. This dark 
green, this evening evergreen on the soft succulent. What an awesome contrast. Just absolutely gorgeous. I've done this before. Same colors. I'm, I'm definitely hooked on those colors. So there's that. Then we've got these two petals and they have two pieces here and here that need to be attached. Make sure I get the right side to put the glue on. Hold it for a second. Here we go. Get this one. And line it up. And there's that one. Now, let's do the stem next. You can see in the picture and in my sample that the stem is dark and this part is the lighter green. And all I did to do that was cut two of them and I'm going to nip the stem off right there and attach this. and cover up that light colored stem or light colored leaf part and then you have the two tone stems that's going to be the center of the pansy in a little bit okay then we've got this one and it's got an edge that's going to go on like this but before we do that i want to add a little bit of yellow shading in here and to do that i used um, Daffodil Delight blends pin in the light and I used the brush end and I just came out from the middle like this and you don't want it to be even you want it to be kind of spread out like that and you're going to have to come out a ways because it's going to get kind of covered up a little bit and if you don't something I realized that if you don't if you got it a little darker than you wanted see this is going to this piece is going to come in here like this and sit right here and so you want that yellow to come out past that a little bit if you get this on here with your blends pins and you've decided you don't want that much color there is the blends um, color lifter pen let's see what is it called exactly um, yeah color lifter <laughs> that's what it's called okay you can come in and go like this and kind of brush back and use that color lifter and it will push some of that color back out and I'm and it lightens it up so it's just a just a little tip that you might want to keep in mind might wonder why you would ever buy the color lifter that might help you realize why you'd want to buy one and I'm going to put on the edge for this one And it goes on here just like that. Line up those edges a little bit. Oops, I'm gonna have to pick it up. That'll make it easier for me. There we go. There we go, it's starting to get sticky. There's that piece. And then this little centerpiece. Now you could cut this from a darker color and I thought about doing that, but um, I didn't. So we're gonna leave it the way it is. And we're gonna put this piece on and it lines up with that little U-shaped section, just like that. So there's the bottom part of my pansy this piece these two pieces are what go on the stem and I did the same thing with them that I did with the center of this one and I just put a little bit of yellow on there and then this piece attaches to that
and everything lines up so it's not hard to know where to put it or how to put it together because everything perfectly matches and then take the stem and I will put some just on that part because that's the part that attaches and we'll just bring it in and stick that together so there's the stem and the leaves here's that part of the flower now we've got these two petals that are going to go behind and um, like I said I cut these with fresh freesia and highland heather and I am going to bring in the light highland heather blends pin and I'm going to use it to add some just a little bit of color to these and I'm going to bring in that color lifter and do some stuff with it to make it look nicer so just be patient with me I'm gonna get that and it the color lifter kind of pushes the color and so it's not going to take it away really it just kind of pushes it so I'm pulling down towards the base where um, and you can see it's it's pushing the color and spreading it out um, and I like that I think it looks nice so that's where I'm gonna leave it now sometimes you have to let that dry for a little bit before you can glue things together um, I typically use mini glue dots to put these pieces together and if you don't let the alcohol ink dry first they won't stick <laughs> so well, let me get some glue dots here and we'll see if we can't make this cooperate yeah see it doesn't want to stick to it yet because it's not totally dry but we'll try it and to judge about where you want these you basically want these to match the edges of your of your main piece and so that'll give you some idea of how to situate them we'll put a couple of glue dots on the back of this one here and here and then that'll give me something see they don't want to stick because they're not dry yet <laughs> so let's see if we can get these to cooperate here we'll go with that one and this one let's yeah I like that that looks good and they seem to be staying in place now and then this little yellow guy goes right here in this little stirrup you can see where it would fit perfectly and I'm going to use a glue dot because all the other places pieces excuse me pieces around it are um, raised up and I want that little piece to have a little bit of dimension to it so I'm putting that glue dot right in there and then this piece is going to go right on top of that kind of fingers in the way but there you go and so there's the center not that cute <clears throat> okay we need a couple more glue dots for the leaves I'm going to put one on the front of each of them like that I'm going to stick them together first like that and then I'm going to stick this wherever you want it for me I want it here and then my stem I'm going to, to put right in here and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right down the stem just on the end of the stem and because I want it to come up a ways let's do it like that hold it until it sticks a little bit very good and then I'm going to attach I thought about doing this with dimensionals but I decided to just attach it with glue dots so I will just put some glue dots on each of these main sections One up there let's see I think one more down here 
and let's put one here and one more I'm gonna kind of get carried away maybe there you go we're gonna put one right in there okay and then we can attach this to the card in front and again, I've left room for a sentiment. You can put something there, a happy birthday or whatever. When the bag is flat and there's nothing in it, you can still stamp that sentiment. So you could use it for any occasion and um, cover up those glue dots. And then it's ready to put something in the bag. Now, there are these clear cellophane, cellophane <laughs> bags in the catalog. They come 25 to a package. They are food safe and they can hold quite a bit and they're cute. They've got the cute little design on them. And so that's what I did is I just put a couple of cookies in there and slipped it down in there. Now you could still fancy up the top a little bit, but that's the basic project. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm glad you stopped by. I want to thank all of my new subscribers and encourage you to share my blog. I love to share what I do. And so please let others know about me and thank you for joining me. Oh, these are the cellophane bags in case you didn't get a chance to see what they look like. And then they open up because they're gusseted. So they hold quite a bit. Okay, thanks again for stopping by. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please shop my online store for the supplies to make these projects. The link is in the description box below.